Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I'm Mark J. Aquaviva, and this is your Yoga Solutions Live on this uh, chilly autumn day, October the 13th, 2020. 2020, 20, what's that? <laughs> uh, just move forward in time 20,000 years. I don't think I'll quite manage that. <laughs> but anyway, 2020. Um, yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are. And um, yes, let, let, let's uh, go ahead um, with your yoga solutions. Uh, I did, didn't get any uh, questions on post this week. Uh, I only put it up yesterday, so not surprising. I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing um, polls. Um, for people because uh, you might sort of come across the um um uh, the uh, scheduled live beforehand it and it's kind of random when i put it up it depends when i have a moment or two to sort it out but if i put a poll <clears throat> on the on the on my group uh for potential subjects and include um an other so you can put in your own ideas um, then, then um, I can answer your questions because um, you know I, I, I'm wanting to give you what you want. I mean, I'm wanting to offer what you need, and um, that's what I'm here for. You know, that's that's my that's my purpose is to um, try and. Um, well, I, I found way I found a way of working that works that that solves issues, and I want to bring this to everyone, everyone that needs it. So I'm gonna yeah, I think I'll start doing putting polls out there so you can um, so so I can give you the content you're looking for and um, and answers you need so uh, that being said um, I'm currently uh, because of my Envira Somatic Intelligence 1 course the um, uh, getting the um, body's natural wave-like responses to um, giving to our contact and giving to the space that we occupy um, unifying those actions so that we can be free in movement that's my current sort of online uh, high-end CPD course for people that are wanting to go there and um, so I'm on I'm currently on the first course um, content which is <clears throat> around finding the natural waves that occur when we center in the solar plexus now um, centering is a bit of a, um, a vague idea um, for most people, um, but in reality, it's 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 quite straightforward. It, it's where you generally centre um, your support, where 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 the where your centre of gravity is over your base in that moment, and um, usually uh, we can do that. We can move yourself around, and and some part of you is in the centre of your gravity. But if any other part of you is holding. And it's not really a centered relationship. It's just a position where your weight happens to be um, kind of balanced. But um, the, the balance will require you to hold that position, which will leave you kind of uh, stuck to, to some degree. Um, it can be a very pleasant exercise, can be a very pleasant experience. But um, I, I'm looking for the deeper nature of things where we get to totally let go into a into this world and the outcome is exactly what we wanted to happen but um to set that up you have to create some conditions you have to um get a bit clever with um how to relate to the earth and how to relate relate to space through breathing and release and um so that's what that's content of the course but um i thought i'd give you a potted version today so that um you can um, get some of the benefit because it's, uh, you know, I want to clear up the mystery of these things. And so the solar plexus, um, let's get a broader scene so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so the solar plexus uh, generally considered as the area between um, the navel and the uh, base of the breastbone. Um, I, I feel it to be the, the whole of the, the fluid contents within this space. So, so it includes um, the diaphragm, you know, the, di the dome-shaped um, breathing muscle that um, spans the lower half of the ribcage and um, comes up into a dome uh, when it relaxes. 
and uh, provided certain circumstances. Um, but uh, and that, but when it uh, works, it put, it bears down. So the the, mu the muscles of the diaphragm tighten, and in doing so, they they sort of bear down, which is why your belly fills when you breathe. Um, uh, the the uh, the potential outcome of that is when you release the breath, the, the fluid contents of the belly can rise up, and um, that upward movement that is a release of tension um is kind of referred to as a practice you can you can make it happen and it's called udhyana bandha and udhyana bandha udhyana bandha means upward flying udhyana upward flying lock bandha so there's a there's a an idea of something moves up uh, through the th uh, through the core from the flu from the solar plexus um maybe below um and there's a lock as in there's a there's a kind of coming together around it that supports that upward movement and it's a, it's a direct practice you can just do it you can um, suck up your belly and you can squeeze your you know pull your muscles together uh, pull your upper belly together pull your ribs together and then you're there sort of <laughs> like as you can hear in my voice you're there holding your breath um it's a strategy um but it's not really a natural thing. It's a, it's a thing that you do to protect your back. It's a thing that's sensible to do if you're going to uh, throw yourself around in postures. But um, and I, I'm not particularly interested in, in that. But what I'm interested in, there is, there is a benefit from that happening. But I don't want to go around all day holding tension, you know, sucking my belly in and pulling my ribs together and my, my belly together to keep it there. <laughs> um, that, that is, um, well, exhausting and unsustainable. And the moment you forget about it, you, you fall to pieces. So um, you know, my, my, I, I'm, not, I'm not someone that likes to make life hard, hard for myself. And I like to find the ease in these things. So, and that's my exploration, is how to find the nature of it. So, um, and, and the nature of this uh, technique which is actually a perfectly natural movement, um, is that is the relationship that this breathing area has to the ground beneath you and the space all around you, depending on uh, your intent. So, you know, if you're uh, collapsed on the sofa and watching TV and being sedentary, then this area is quite likely to breathe. So, so you'll sort of collapse over it and it will fill, and when you release the breath, you'll sort of drop into it and um, and and into your sofa as you're watching your program. Um, that obviously isn't the thing that we're looking for if we're looking to feel light and strong and upright and that sort of thing. So um, uh, that that put description isn't. Your solar plexus uh, is, isn't you relating to the earth and to space from the solar plexus. That, that's you sitting on the thing, and then you'll get this experience of, you know, being lifted by the pressure that arrives in this fluid core, and then dropping again when the pressure releases. And actually, the diaphragm isn't really moving. What, what's happening is the body is being moved. Uh, by by the breath, um, the diaphragm is involved, but it's not releasing up. Uh, your body is collapsing down over it rather than um, it being allowed to release up. It, it remains um, kind of what's doing the support. Um, you know, it's a powerful muscle. It's um, it's there with you all the time because it's a breathing muscle, so you so you can rely on it. Um, a bit of physiology. Um, but um, what, what do we want? Uh, let, let's let's try and put it into practice. So, the the movement I'm talking about, the, the when when the solar plexus itself is relating to um, space. So from here, you are engaging with space. There is a, a sucking back feeling that goes with that goes with um, letting go of tension in your back. You know, you can you can suck up and pull up, but that's kind of two lots of tensions. That's you lifting with your back and 
using your ribs to pull the, 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 the fluid space up. So you're broadening your ribs and the suction kind of draws the space up. And that, that's not really on a bender, although um, it's a lot of people's experience of it. Um, a relationship to the space that you occupy that is sourced in this being your uh, center of gravity um, would go something like a release of tension into your back to breathe so you naturally get a broader breath rather than a lifted um, sort of dumb breath so you get a, a sense of the breath widening into your back and that, that's you sort of resting from this place into the space behind you. And if you're prepared to sort of um, allow the whole body to, to relax into this space, like there's a sofa there, but what catches you isn't the sofa, it's the breath. So it's a feeling of allowing the breath to broaden across your back with a kind of spaciousness in here, a hollowness, an emptiness. And essentially, that's the rib cage and uh, and everything else allowing the breath, rather than the diaphragm pushing down and working for it. So you get that sort of broadness behind you, and um, because of gravity, because of the natural responses of the um, body, the reflexes. Um, I'm talking. Uh, I'm talking about the moro reflex of sorts. It's a kind of a natural response to feeling like you're going to fall over. It's, um, you know, the limbs splay out, the, the, and that can include the legs, which is why when you are used to sitting like this, um, it's why the groins catch your weight, you see? So, so people end up with tight groins when they sit uh, because they get fixed in that part of the wave. But um, if you can trust the space behind you as a as a kind of supportive surface as the breath arrives you'll get a kind of a flexion feeling with an awful lot of space on the inside which is the opposite of what people do to do Uriana Banda quite often okay it's a it's a relaxation that invites the breath to move into the rest of the body and it starts in a kind of flexion mode but in that release, this emptying space um, kind of tries to hook onto the ground underneath you so that it pushes you forwards again. So as you allow that backward moving space, the, the muscles involved in responding in here uh, with the breath or its release kind of get involved directly and you might even be able to see that uh, my weight is over this part of the base and from behind this space close to the spine uh, so sort of this sort of area uh, inside of me um, th that space is connecting to the ground and kind of bearing down and kind of working pushing pushing into the ground to pull me forwards and um, my legs are joining in at the moment because i'm not really um, with my feet so, so my groins pull up. Um, uh, I could change that, but um, let's stay on topic. So if you can relax into the space behind you and receive the breath, the core of the body at the solar plexus, the cent central point of that, this space between navel and heart, um, gets involved with the ground to pull you forwards. And what's more, if, if you're allowing the breath to um, not only sort of land on the ground behind you, but climb from this space up through the body, then as you kind of rest into the breath, not only behind here, but higher up, it becomes a surface that the shoulders try and touch and the head tries to touch as you find your way forwards. So you get this wave-like response that brings you forwards, not directly from the solar plexus, but from the spine a little higher up. The spine behind the heart, essentially. So you get a, a wave-like movement that starts in flexion, 
and ends up in in whole spine elongation rather than extension, you see? And that upward flying movement within, which most of us feel with the inhale, but it's, but it's actually happening in a real way when the diaphragm releases with the release of the breath. What we feel with the inhale is the climbing of the body. So we think it comes up. But when we release the breath in, in this upward fashion from the response that anchors us to the ground from within, when we release the breath, then the release of pressure allows the diaphragm to come up. The release of the breath and of our weight away from this place to the ground behind us allows this place to come together. So by exploring, surrendering in harmony to the um, and surrendering in, uh, in sync with the arrival or the release of the breath into the space behind the solar plexus and allowing the body's whole, the whole body's responses to that with an idea that what it's trying to do is trying to bring you back to an equal base, then you can discover the upward flying lock. The diaphragm remains up because you've released the breath. And it's a very strong sensation because it's not you doing it, it's an internal response that can be sustained by releasing down away from space. It's an internal response that takes you up in space, but that can be sustained because you release around that movement to the ground. That's what uh, Uriyana Banda is. Um, and it can be discovered in this way by you uh, letting go, by you t letting go in a whole hearted fashion. So <clears throat> if, if you followed that and you've got something going on, if you feel that potential, then the job, uh, let, let's try posture. So you can just turn. And if you just turn, you probably use your limbs to pull yourself around. Uh, you'll be using your groins as well. But what you can do is let go into the space behind here and let that wave of movement bring you into space on the side you're intending to arrive on. So you get a kind of a unfolding with the arrival of the breath and with its release to arrive in uprightness with this central space kind of connecting to the space above you from its tether into the ground beneath you. And it's a breath by breath exploration as you let go to breathe and as you let go to release the breath. And these waves of movement will continue until the place that you arrive in at the end of the breath is equal contact. It's so ridiculously simple. The, the, the core of the body around the solar plexus is trying to do the job of anchoring into the ground and pulling your weight forwards so that you can arrive in a stable base. And if it does the job, then what you'll arrive in is a sense of being able to give your weight equally to your base. And the only thing that will get you there is not by pulling yourself there. Well, it can, but you'll arrive with those complications. If you can wave your way into it, if you can move from within to move this weight around so that you end up in a place where your weight is as equally through the right side as it is through the left, most people will be heavier on the side that you're turning to. 
as much on the front of the base as it is on the back. Then what you end up with is from this central space, you've got a relationship to the ground behind you, which is your anchor from which you can fly. But as you give weight away from where you are in space to the base in front of you, you're left in space from this central anchoring. Upward flying, hmm, look, it feels like an up upward flying relief, even though around here is engaging, not because I'm holding it, but because uh, it's connecting to the ground. It's like you can fly from above this place because, uh, you know, like a kite does when you're holding onto the string. You don't want you don't want to let go because then the kite is unsupported and it, you'll lose it. <laughs> but you, if you hold on to the string, you get that firm sense of release in space, and the upward flying bit is there to keep you upright, and the downward anchor is there to keep you anchored. And perhaps the the waves become more subtle. And because they're sort of centering in your base and centering in space, you can end up with a kind of standing wave, if you like, centered in the solar plexus. Let's try the other side. So uh, cross legs just for variation. So I, I want to go over here. But I want to find it by releasing tension into my earth and by allowing my deep, natural, wholehearted responses to space to join in so that I get both anchoring and a release away from that anchoring in space through the arrival of the breath, which is the easiest one for the mind to follow. But once you've got the idea of it, you know how that movement goes. It's a movement of your weight from within. So you can end up releasing the breath into exactly the same thing, which is far more useful for the spine. Because when, you know, when we're breathing, the mind goes with it. There, there is some effort, but it's a responsive effort to stop you falling over. <laughs> but when you can release the breath from here to the ground beneath you, when you can release the breath from here to the space in, above you. When you can find these waves arriving in, in a kind of equal touch, so from here, from this place you, you drop into the base behind you, and from above you drop into the base in front of you, you allow the base in front of you to fall away from you. Then from that equal base, as we breathe, we meet the space above equally, in front and behind. In front and behind. So it becomes possible to find near perfect structural balance centered in the solar plexus through the rhythms of breathing, not by holding it there, but allowing the waves to keep moving until what you arrive in on your base is equal, front, back and sides, so that what you can arrive in in space above you is equal, front, back to one side to the other side above you equal and when you meet the space below and the space above equally with the breath from the center solar plexus remains spacious 
And when you release in the same direction, into the space above and the space below, with the release of the breath, you stay with the above and below as you dissolve into the center. And that kind of released outcome is far more powerful than any amount of efforting. Got five minutes, let's, let's try something else. So, you know, that was just in uprightness. So, um, say, say I want to try it in something like this. Um, the advantage is I've got contact in front of me here. Um, but it's not, essentially it's not different. I, I want the arrival of the breath to begin behind the solar plexus, if you want to center that, so that it doesn't fill up with air instead. And the result is a wave of movement that takes me towards the arm end of the body, the head end of the body, and a wave of movement that can take me towards the foot end of the body, base. And they're both sort of, in that situation, they're both going to be kind of, they're both going to start as flexion waves. But as from this place, I give to the base in front, there's going to be a release of the spine that allows this upward moving space to remain anchored by that contact in front of me because basically I'm going through the same thing. I'm, I'm finding support from the space behind, my, behind me. So it sends my spine forwards. So I get a sense of relaxing in extension, but it's not a heaviness here. It's a release into space from within. And when I find a similar kind of experience from the back of the waist down to the knees, down to the knees and then to the feet, then I can release into a full flexion movement. But if I allow the play to be between the feet and the arms, if I allow the play to be between the arms and the feet. And if I move from the solar plexus, I can reorganize my weight quite simply, following the natural rhythms of breathing. I can move that inner space to land me open from the heart on the forearms. And I can Allow that inner space to land me open in the legs towards the feet. Then between those things, perhaps I can land on my base from the solar plexus to receive the breath behind me. My base being front and back. And perhaps when I release the breath, I can allow the same movement. The difference will be release of tension from the spine it allows me to rest from the solar plexus into my hands and receive the breath directly from the hands it allows the solar plexus to rest spacious directly to the feet and receive the breath from the feet so that I can release the breath into my hands, through my hands, through my feet, as the solar plexus remains spacious and gathered together around as the, as the spine elongates in response to that. Whatever you choose to do with it. Okay, I hope that was useful.
Good. So that was me. <laughs> um, I hope you found that useful. Um, feel free to spread it around Facebook for a bit. Um, it'll be up for a few days and it'll go onto the website for silver and gold members. Um, so yeah, do, do spread it around if you, if you think it's handy. Uh, if you've got any benefit from it. And uh, yes, I've got a workshop this Saturday, my Saturday, one of my um, Saturday morning retreats, two and a half hours, 10.30 to one, kind of gentle flow built on a theme that will take you somewhere. Not dissimilar to that. Might be different by Saturday. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting ready for the next course um, content, which is more about the neck and throat. So you might get some of that too. If you join uh, on Saturday, it's um, uh, half price for view only, uh, 15 quid or so. And um, if you want to be interactive and get some hints uh, from me seeing you on screen, then you you but you get a interactive place, uh, bargain workshop. Come along and then enjoy. And I shall see you soon. Much love to you. Bye now. <laughs>